Thank you, brother. Well delivered. Love to think about these very large aspects of God's nature. Glad to hear these affirmations that God determined to make himself known. Despite that, some live in the full-blown light of revelation but remain in the camp of God's enemy. Heaven doesn't do experiments. Salvation has more to do with God than with man. He's on the initiative to be merciful. He can justify only when it's right to do so. So those are just a few of the large statements that our brother made as uh, the Lord revealed these things uh, to Moses. Several of us have preached from this text. Uh, it's, it's, an enormous, <laughs> it's an enormous statement here. Of course, our God is very large, as the brother said, uh, and, and he wants us to know him. So the exhortation is, know the Lord. This is what he's calculated to do in the covenant that we have in Christ Jesus. They shall all know me. See, this is what, what we have this revelation, this, this written record of God's works and his words, that we would know him, see, and that then the knowledge of him would work in us in such a way that we would then be prepared for his presence, for we will all stand before him. Mm-hmm. We're all going to God. Yeah. See, we know that. Some will remain and abide with him, and others will not. Mm-hmm. The only ones that will remain are those who are welcome, those who are ready, those who want to, mm-hmm. in some sense, those who want to. If they want to, he wants you to. Yeah. And he has accounted for your want to. And your want to accounts for his want to, if you want to say it that way. In the wisdom of God from the foundation of the world, he has accounted for all of these things. He, simply, uh, he has simply incorporated the creation of our world and our creation into his eternal purpose, which was already at work before the world began, before time began. Before God carved this section out of eternity, if you want to say it that way. He's carved this section out of eternity with a beginning and an end in order to demonstrate some aspects of his nature. And a prominent one, of course, is his mercy. That's a pretty good question the brother posed. Uh, Did Satan know about the mercy of God? It's likely that he didn't. Likely that he never he was not able to calculate for that. He thought that he could just interrupt God's work and make God look foolish in some way. But of course that can't be. And the opponent of God's will and wisdom knows that now. He has learned, in some sense, that he cannot effectively oppose God. That he cannot do damage to the Most High. As our brother began to deliver this exposition of this text and subject, it made me think of these words here from Psalm 33. I already read some of them this morning. The word of the Lord is true, or is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Let all the earth fear the Lord. All the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people to no effect. And by contrast, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. Plans of his heart to all generations. And then here's the exhortation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. See, he's already accounted for those who belong to him. Who will choose him? He's already chosen them. See, we find that out in this revelation. Many are called, few are chosen. So we want to, we want to put ourselves in the camp of the blessed. Yes. Remove ourselves from the camp of the condemned those who oppose God, and never go back, not even look back, Amen. Mm-hmm. not even look back, huh? 
but enter in and take, take up full residence there and engage our citizenship, if you will, fully engage our citizenship. We have people all around us here in our country talk about things like that. They want us to be fully engaged and vote for this and vote for that and go to city council meetings or do this, that, or the other with some whatever. Well, the Word of God is, is exhorting us as believers to fully engage our citizenship in His kingdom. To participate or involve ourselves, I should say, in that in which we participate. Take hold of that for which you were taken hold of in Christ Jesus, in other words. Amen. It's so refreshing to see these things from this perspective uh, that, as the brother said, God doesn't experiment. This is not, this is not some random casting around. To, well, let's, that didn't work. Let's see if this will work. You know, like men do. God is sovereign, and he has, we could say, engineered all of these things to work this way, according to the counsel of his will. Which he counseled in himself, by the way. That's, that's very refreshing. I, even before I knew this, I somehow sensed we can't be worth what God has done. We just can't be. Because I knew it in myself. I wasn't worth yeah, yeah. what he had done. I just wasn't. No, any way that I looked at it, it didn't matter that I'd been in church all my life and that I hadn't this or I hadn't that and so forth. What I had done made me not worth uh -huh. what he has done. Yeah, that's right. And so it's greatly refreshing uh, to know that that's exactly the case. Yes. Amen. That that the, 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 uh, the small measure that I knew of this book uh, that I hadn't yet put together, well now, you know, in the last several years, I've been able to put that together with the preaching and exhortation of many and probing some further, hanging on to the truth until I got, until I got it, so to speak, just beginning to get it, I think. At times I think I'm just beginning to get it. <laughs> that God has done and is doing these things for his own name's sake. Amen. But in his great mercy, he has involved us. He has taken for himself a people for his own possession, that they would be zealous for good deeds just as he is. Amen. It's stunning to, to declare these things to people and, and, and see their faces. I, I get the opportunity to do that. I purposely speak about these things this way and watch their faces. Yeah. Or some of them are clueless, of course, mm -hmm. but others are just stunned at the thought of, so, well, they never had, or so not hearing these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and they, they don't know the word well enough and so forth. But the, those of us who do, we can tell. We can tell them. Yeah. This is what God has said. Yeah. This is what it means. This is what he's doing. See, it's prominent all through the record there, as the brother said. Amen. It's all through the record. Amen. It sure is. It's absolutely consistent, the record that God has given us concerning his son. And then, of course, it, that phrase, concerning his son, that makes it real personal then, doesn't it? Yeah. Amen. Because we have seen his glory. Mm -hmm. The glory as of the only begotten, full of grace and truth. Now, that doesn't mean that he has... Come to the front door here at 406 Sergeant. No. No, he hasn't been here in that sense. He is here <laughs> among his people. He is here with us. And he himself is the one who's teaching us these things by his spirit, showing us these things. And so we would be quick, diligent, devoted, and endure in listening and learning the things what the Spirit says to the churches. Yes. Amen. Brethren, your comments about these things. Thank you, brother.